Oh god, this dialogue is endless. And none of these buttons do anything. I can't speed up the dialogue. This is crazy. And it's all just fluff. None of this needs to be here. Oh god. Well, if I can get you to fill out this registration card, you can have a nice room. Here's a pen for you. A nice pen, too. Don't go stealing it. Like, why, why are these three sentences when it could be one? Okay, give me the pen. I'm gonna- I'm totally gonna steal this pen, by the way. There's absolutely no way this guy is getting his pen back. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping on to the Nintendo DS to check out Hotel Dusk, Room 215, I think. Hold on, yep, that is the title of the game. It's funny, once you start playing a game, if you don't have the box right in front of you, sometimes you just totally forget the, the name of what you're playing, so... Um, usually I have something to the side that tells me what I'm playing, but, uh, I know I, I can see what I'm playing, but just sometimes the title is, escapes me. Um, so this is a Nintendo DS game that you hold vertically, um, kind of like a book. So you kind of have the Nintendo DS open like a book. And fun fact, this game actually allowed you to select whether you were left or right handed. And, uh, you might have to rotate the DS 180 degrees, but it would basically let you put the touch screen on whatever side you wanted. Now, me being a lefty, we're going to go ahead and select left and, uh, see, uh, what happens here. Um... But, uh, oh yeah, and so see, the game is totally upside down, so we have to rotate it. Bear with me. Okay, and here we are, Hotel Dusk, Room 215. This looks like a scary horror game, guys, so I don't know what's gonna happen here. But in we go. Friday, December 24th, 1976 in New York. Oh, look at this. Kind of cool, uh... Cool retro. I didn't realize this was taking place in the 70s in New York City. We got cops and people walking around. Crimes are being committed. Hide. Phone. Oh, oh, that's kind of a cool animation. 89th Precinct. This is Hide. What the hell? Bradley? Who the hell's Bradley? Okay, off by the docks. Some nefarious crap was going on. Oh man, that guy's gonna shoot the other guy. Bradley! Why? What is happening? Don't move! It's interesting how, because we have our screen side by side, uh, the animation doesn't quite line up. They kind of built this assuming there would be a little bit of a gap. Uh, maybe we can actually fix this. Hold on. Okay, this is a gap now. I don't know if this is the right size gap or not, but we will see. Anyway, that was all just a dream. Now in 1979, what do we got going on here? We got phones a ringing. It's interesting how we we're in the two like big cities, like New York and LA. Like all detective stories take place in one of those two cities, except two, True Detective, which takes place in Louisiana. At least the first season did, and that was freaking awesome. But uh, typically, you go for LA or New York if you're writing like a, a crime noir series. Uh, the animation I, I'm liking is pretty cool. And also, I think this gap is working out just perfectly. We saw- we're seeing a few scenes where it's- it's uh, going between both screens, and I think the gap is just right. So here we are at the gas service station. Why haven't you checked in? Stop yelling, Ed. Don't yell at me. I don't do good detective work when people yell. Ed's <laughs> pounding like a marching man. I don't know what's happening. I guess his, like, partner betrayed him or something. Uh, normally when I can't follow the story, it's because I'm too busy not paying attention talking to you guys. But this time, I feel like not too much has gone on in the story. I'm still lost. But that's okay. Hopefully solving the crimes won't be dependent on knowing this guy's tragic backstory. And off he drives. It's, it is kind of interesting to think that the developers of Nintendo DS games intentionally build a gap into the two screens when the two screens are supposed to interact. I mean, obviously, I guess you would have to, uh, but it's just something I never really thought about until you start trying to record a Nintendo DS game. 
Um, and the easiest way to record them is through emulators, and then you quickly realize, hey, if you have the screen side by side, it actually looks wrong. You actually want a gap. So, anyway, we're driving our 1976 station wagon to Hotel Dusk. I wonder if this is going to have supernatural elements in it. We shall see. It's been three years since I quit the forest and left New York. Now I'm a salesman. Oh, man. <laughs> salesman. That's uh, quite a drop in uh, prestige. Door-to-door -door, door -door salesman, no doubt. That is bottom of the barrel. Uh, but Ed the boss has himself a little business on the side. He finds things that don't always want to be found. Keeps it quiet, too. From time to time, I lend a hand. All right, so he's still kind of working as a private eye on the side. He's got a side gig. Um, hell, I got nowhere, nowhere to be and nothing better to do. You hear me, Bradley? This is it. This is what I'll be doing until I find you. All right, so we still got a beef with Bradley. I thought the guy was dead from my dream, but I guess not. We got Bradley beef. Oh, I was supposed to click. Interesting. I thought that was all just a cutscene. This game has, like, a really fascinating mix of, like, 3D and 2D and, like, comic book animation and styles and stuff. Pretty cool. It has, like, an odd, creepy vibe. Oh, God, he's glitching out. Great. An empty lobby with no one home. Where's the front desk in this dump? So this is obviously not supposed to be part of it. <laughs> it's, uh... The emulator is, uh... Uh, freaking out. Uh, cute sign pal, I guess this is where I check in. Ed's package here yet? Question mark? God, I wish this would stop. There we go. Okay, we're at the front desk. Oh, look at this! Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! I have never seen this kind of control in a game. This is pretty cool. It's like a, a first-person 3D game. But you have a top-down controls over to the side. I like that. Okay, so... We click on this. This is like our journal of things. Let's just go back, because obviously nothing has happened yet. So hold on, when things start blinking... We can click this. Oh, and then do things. Cool. Uh, how about we ring the bell? Guy's got a bell on the counter. Nice touch. We just solve a puzzle. Ah, we solved the puzzle of summoning the clerk. Maybe this dump isn't deserted after all. Rosa, hey Rosa, have I told you once? I told you a thousand times. Don't go bothering me when I'm watching a game. Huh? An actual customer? What the hell? You ain't Rosa. Oh, this guy's fantastic. Um, did you call me Rosa, dude? Who's Rosa? Rosa, she's a hotel maid. Hard worker, but she's got a mouth the size and it. Oh, God. <laughs> That's uh, pretty insulting, actually. Always finding ways to bust my chops while I'm watching a game. Yeah. How dare Rosa do things like demand you check in customers? What a biatch, eh? She's totally out of line, apparently. Uh, welcome to my own little slice of heaven, Hotel Dusk. Dunning Smith seems like a grumpy piece of leather. <laughs> I hope I said that to his face. So yeah, here for a room or just to hear me jaw? A grumpy piece of leather. I'm using that on somebody. That's mine now. What kind of room do you want? Cheap. <laughs> like Rosa. <laughs> I don't know why I'm giving Rosa guff. I should say cheap like Dunning. Well, if you want to save a bit of scratch, I got a room available. Great. I don't know how comfortable I would feel staying in the cheapest room at a shady motel because you know it's cheap for a reason and I don't need to spell out the reasons it's going to be cheap but you guys can probably imagine how would you like to stay in something a little nicer you have nicer rooms yep you're in sales right door to door on your feet all day something like that Yep, I know it. You haul around the case all day and the dogs get to barking. You know, I've said this many times, but I honestly feel like 
I don't dislike dialogue in games, and it can create atmosphere, but I legitimately think sometimes game developers don't realize the power of brevity, and that some of these game developers really should bring on like a Hollywood script doctor to like smooth things out, because like these guys are just shooting the shit, talking back and forth about all this stuff, and it's like, is any of this necessary? <laughs> Like, can we get to the room, please? Now, this is a bit rare. And oddly enough, because this is a touchscreen thing, there's no way to skip the dialogue. Or unless maybe some of the buttons do it. Oh, maybe one of the buttons did it. Uh, sweet sounds nice, or sweets are for chumps. Whatever, I'll take the sweet. I don't want to stay in your murder room. Give me the one where people have been murdered less often in your shady motel. Well, it normally run you 350, but I'll let you have it for three bills even. Three hundred dollars? You think I'm an idiot? See, like they're negotiating back and forth. Why is this in the, the dialogue? Oh, guys, just drawing it out. Okay, I can press one of these buttons. I think. No, it just gives me the illusion they're talking faster. You still can't get through. Well, if I can get you to fill out this registration card, you can have a nice room. Here's a pen for you. A nice pen, too. Don't go stealing it. Like, why, why are these three sentences when it could be one? Okay, give me the pen. I'm gonna. I'm totally gonna steal this pen, by the way. There's absolutely no way this guy is getting his pen back. Okay, so now, room number... Do I click on the name? Hotel Dusk? City? Address? And then can I put my name in? Kyle Hyde. His penmanship is atrocious. Room number? I guess that, that, that guy will fill that out. There we go, we successfully filled out- <laughs> I like how it sounds like we solved a puzzle. You filled out the hotel registration card. The mystery thickens. Um, okay. Blah, 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 blah. Hold on! What's your problem, dude? You don't like my name? I told you, ain't nothing. Don't tell me it's nothing. You see my name on a wasted wanted poster or something? Nah, it ain't like that. Just remembered the name, that's all. Oh, God. Cut to the chase, for the love of God. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Ain't a big deal. Anyway, about your room. You're in room 215, here's the key. You know, oddly enough, I think another thing that makes movies and TV shows have less just jibber-jabber in them than like a video game like this is that they have a runtime. You know, TV shows have to be like 20 or 40 minutes, or I mean like with Netflix nowadays, streaming shows don't have any definable limit, but people still expect like maybe an hour max. Uh, and movies is like two, sometimes three if it's like a really epic movie, but like one and a half, two hours. So it's like you can't just fill, you, you can't have like 10 minutes of pointless conversation. You got to cut that crap down. <laughs> Game developers, please, for the love of God, trim your conversations. I don't know, maybe... Maybe people who love this game are watching like, no, Jay, you're missing all the, the atmosphere. You're just, you're just ignoring these guys talking over them. But I'm like, you know, if I, if I was actually reading all of this, you know, we're, we're like, what, 15 minutes into this game? We've done two things. Oh, three things. Sorry, we rang a bell, we filled out a card, and we took a key. I honestly don't even know what room we're in because I wasn't paying attention. And that's on me. I, I will own that. Um, I will own that, but, uh, I don't know. These guys are just going on and on, man. Um, he has a story to tell me, though. I don't know, maybe this will be relevant. Oh, I'm in room 215. Duh, it's in the title of the game. <laughs> okay. See, I'm not the smartest, but I get there sometimes. It's got a, what you call it, a history. Like, ghost? You tell me it's haunted? Ghost pa nah, this is way better. Some spook with chain than some spook with chains. Couple of murdered prostitutes and uh you know what uh, what else you got in there? We don't clean the sheets. There's your there's your surprise room two fifteen. Um you just may find it tonight, you follow, that's the story of room two fifteen. So it's some sort of like wish granting 
Motel, side of the highway, motel suite. Okay, who knew? Well, I'm excited. Here's a map. Give me that map. Alright, thanks, man. Get out of- get out- get out of here. Even in real life, nobody would talk to you this long. It'd be so awkward. You go in to, like, get a room, and you're talking to the guy for, like, 40 minutes. It's one of those conversations it's hard to get out of. You start, like, inching away, and you're like, yep, yep, and you're, like, looking at the ground as they're talking, and they just keep talking, they don't get the hint, and you're like, God, how do I get out of this? Checkout's at 10, miss it, and we charge you double. Of course, if you want to stay in at night, just let me know. All right. Now... What won't you talk? My room grants wishes. I'm waiting. You know what? I don't. I don't want to say anything more to you. As it turns out, I'm done, buddy. I'm done. Enjoy your stay. So, I mean, the interface is cool, and it was cool. Like as things were coming up, questions appeared at the top, so it's like later you could ask about them. Um, my only complaint so far is that like insane, unnecessarily long dialogue. Oh, the guy even shows up on your radar, too. We're, like, looking at him through the walls. I know you're there! But we're gonna carry on. Oh, hell. What? I forgot to check with the front desk to see if Ed's package arrived. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Well, um, let's talk to this guy. What is it? Got a second? Like, why are there two things of dialogue there when it could just jump right to the question? <laughs> I'm waiting for a package. There's supposed to be a package for me. A package for you? Sorry, I don't see nothing. It should be here. Maybe you can actually look around or something? Yeah, send a package to a hotel when you don't even have a reservation. Nice. Like, again, needless dialogue here. It's just going on and on. This package better not cause problems. Oh, yeah. Mind your business, Pops. Fetch the package like a good little monkey. Sure, sure. No worries. Didn't mean to pry. Then there's no problem. I'll have the bellhop look for your package. If it shows up, we'll bring it to you. Thanks for wasting my time, old man. You're lucky I don't sock you. Go suck on an egg. Give the old school detective insults. Huh? Pardon me, sir. Do you have a room available? Is it Bradley? As I walk away from the front desk, I hear a voice behind me. Oh, that's definitely not Bradley. <laughs> that's an old woman who... That's an old pirate. I need a room for the night. Just another guest. Welcome to my own little... Okay, well, do we have to listen in on their conversation, too? Uh, as luck would have it, we have vacancies. What kind of room? So now we're just listening in on other people. Not not only are our own conversations <laughs> needlessly long and elaborate and full of chit chat, but now we have this one. Oh, she wants the wishing room too. Um, unfortunately, ma'am, that room's. Oh dear, is it taken? That's right. I'm damn sorry about it, man. If you actually had a hotel that granted wishes. I feel like, uh, it would be more than, it would, it would become like Las Vegas, like, it would be a huge attraction, people would be coming, wouldn't be some sort of, like, trashy thing on the side of the highway that, like, only a couple of locals knew about and nobody else wanted anything to do with. Like, like, you would be a millionaire ten times over. I mean, just stay in your own wishing room and wish for a million bucks and you got it. That reminds me, when I asked about my package, Dunning said something. You send a package to a hotel where you don't even have a reservation? Nice. Oh, and this package better... Now we're listening! <laughs> okay. Now we are re-listening to a conversation we just had. Not only is there insane dialogue, not only do we have to listen to other people's dialogue, we have to listen to our own dialogue <laughs> multiple times. I'm sorry, this is just insane. I wonder what he meant about causing problems. Oh good! I'm glad we reminisced about that. Right after hearing it. Oh my god. There's room 111. Should we just burst into room 111, kick in the door, and see who's in there? The door is locked. Okay, where's the boot icon? Select boot. Kick. Knocking's not getting me anywhere. 
Is there a boot down here? Can the fist go into punching mode? This sign on the door says 111. I am literate. I can read. I know almost every letter and all numbers. I am the Uberman. Anything cool down here? It's interesting how, like, I, I'm kind of just focusing purely on the top-down view when I move. You guys are probably looking at the uh, first-person mode more than me. Like, I'm in the top-down view being like, is there anything interesting down this hallway? I could look over here and see, but it's kind of hard to look in both places at once, but... Um... The elevator's closed. This... Uh, okay, more dialogue. Are the stairs back here? I'm literally looking at them! <laughs> This game, I can't get over it, man. It's, uh, it's actually ridiculous. I like how we get his, uh, sort of, uh, facial expression as he walks up the stairs. He looks so, like, untrusting of the stairs. Huh? There's some kid sitting on the stairs. Are we gonna get to this wishing room or what, man? What? You're blocking the stairs, kid. Move it. No. So this is how it's gonna be. Move it, you brat. Begin removing your belt in a threatening manner. I was here first. Oh my. So, in a normal video game, there'd be like a troll or a demon or something like blocking access to a certain area. Here, the obstacles are a child who wants to converse with you. I- why can't I just walk around her? Where do you come from? What's your name? Leave me alone! I'm not telling you anything, mister. What was that, kid? Why won't you tell me? Why won't you tell me things, kid? Not like I'm a stranger. That's what my mom taught me. Oh, God. This is gonna devolve into a PSA about not talking to strangers. This guy looks so badass, but like, listen to the music in the background and like, look at the things he's doing. He, he's ch having trouble checking into a hotel and walking past a child. I'm not putting up with your crap. Ooh, scary. What are you gonna do, huh? You wanna know? Do we get an option? <laughs> I'll call Dunning and have you give him the bums ra- <laughs> Oh my god, it's so PG. I'm gonna tattle on you, kid. Look at her face. She's like, oh, not the bums rush. Maybe I'll call your mom and tell her that her kid's a damn terror. Y you'll call my mom? Hey, kid. Um, ha, huh, she's afraid of mom. What now, you afraid of your mom? Great. Oh, yeah. Now we feel good about ourselves. We uh, told off a small child. Well, it's really, like, honestly her fault. Get out of the effing way of the stairs. Not complicated, kid. M -m mom I'm gonna ignore this one. Huh? You're not a baby. Don't start crying for mommy. I don't buy it. Something tells me we're really burning a bridge here because we might need her later in the story, but... I just want these NPCs to get out of my way. <laughs> get me to the wishing room, damn it. I can't finish it. Can't finish what? Can't finish my puzzle. Oh my god, we're gonna have to solve our puzzle. Alright. Give me the the stupid Rubik's Cube or whatever the hell it is you're trying to solve, kid, and let me do it for you. I can't finish it! It's almost done, but... But what? This kid's a loon! This isn't the place to be working on a puzzle. Go to your room or the car or freeway or something. And dad says I make too much noise. He can't stand the sound of me solving puzzles. It drives him crazy. That's why I'm here. Well, go sit in the lobby. There are chairs. I'll sit on the stairs. <laughs> I can't, okay? I can't finish this stupid puzzle because it's too hard and stupid. Just like me. All right. Let's solve your goddamn puzzle. Give me the stupid thing, kid. Watch it be like one of those impossible Sudokus that don't give you any hints or something. What? What? Huh? Are you gonna help me, mister? Stop calling me mister! <laughs> I'm 24! <laughs> I'm nobody's mister. Use my name. Mr. Hyde? 
Close enough. Listen, just... Wait, how does she know my name? I guess I told her in one of those conversations I spent. This is the puzzle you can't solve? Are you mental? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, but come on. Seriously, kid? This is the puzzle that she couldn't solve. It's... It's a... It's a rabbit in a diaper. Dear God, kid. Oh my God. This, this is the puzzle that elu eluded her so. I don't even think I solved it right. I don't even know what that was. It didn't even look like it lined up properly. But there you go, kid. Now take this and scram. She does look kind of cool, you know? She's like wearing like, you know, her dad's army jacket and stuff. Like she kind of looks like a no-nonsense kid. She's doing a baby puzzle on the stairs. And it's, it's not even like, like jigsaw puzzles are not super mobile. So she would have had to have like a book and all the puzzles laid out. Like it's not the kind of puzzle you go solve on the stairs. You need a table to solve puzzle. It just makes no sense. The logic of it. It doesn't make any sense. Oh my God. It just isn't, it's no fun if I don't do it myself. The girl throws the finished puzzle down on the stairs. What? Are you kidding me? <laughs> exactly. What are you doing? You're a complete basket case, you know that? I agree with that assessment. Thanks for the help before you bust up the puzzle. You talk too much. Can, is there a skip button? If we press down real hard on the touchscreen, will it detect our anger and let us out of this god-awful conversation? I feel like I'm trapped. This is worse than, than any physical prison. I'm trapped in a conversation. At least she picked up the puzzle pieces. Can I walk past her now? Is this is this chick so physically imposing I can't just barrel my way through, smack her in the face with the side of my briefcase as I walk by? Accidentally, in quotes. Well, we all know it's no accident. Ah, she's... She's turning into an emotional wreck. Oh, God, I don't know what's going on. Ha ha ha, oh, good. She oscillating between extreme emotions... Bursting into tears and then and then extreme jubilation. That's not a sign of being a psycho. The girl laughs at me and runs up the stairs. Thank God. I don't have time for this crap. I'm getting too old for this shit. Who is that kid? That is a question I am not going to ask. The girl drops something on the stairs. I want nothing to do with it. Don't pick it up. You're going to get sucked into her crap. Whatever. We'll keep her puzzle piece. Now she won't be able to solve her puzzle, and it will drive her nuts. Huh, there's a black line on the back. Uh oh, maybe there was actually something more valuable on the back of the puzzle. Crap, now I do kind of want to know where she is. But not enough to actually find her. Let's find room 211. 220. Utility closet and the linens. Can we get some extra linens? Let's see here. Go into door accessing mode. Staff only. Door is locked. Anyone in there? Taking a break? No one's in. Alright. I wonder if through the course of the game you eventually do have to interact with all those like different rooms and closets. Like it's interesting they have all these different rooms and stuff, but I don't know how many you actually are going to uh, be using. Somebody's coming out of room 213. Th Somebody's exiting a room. It's like this big event, a big monumental event in this guy's life. It's some dude in his PJs. I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to. D don't. Don't do a thing. Okay, good. We skipped that conversation. The young guy looks around uneasily, then returns to his room. Never notices me. Good. <laughs> Thank God. We can avoid one conversation in this game. We will have saved 22 minutes of life. This is room 215. But we just go in. The door is locked. Guess that figures. Oh wait, I have a key, right? The key, the, the key I got at the front desk should open it. Unless the owner's... Idiot. If the key doesn't work, and we have to go back, and we have to get a different key, I am gonna lose it. I use my key and unlock the door to room 215. Alright. Let me in. 
What do we got in here? Looks like a room. Room 215. I wish it didn't glitch out on certain poses, but there's not much I can do about that. Guess this is where I bunk for the night. I've had it worse. Yeah, it's a room with a TV and stuff. Not bad. Put my suitcase in the on the table in the corner. Phone, huh? Who knows I'm here? I bet it's the front desk, just saying my package arrived. And we have to walk down to the, uh... Oh, that's cool. Okay, but this is not what I wanted. And we'll have to walk down to the front desk, and we'll have to, uh, get our package. I want my wish already, man. The phone's ringing. Answer it! <laughs> Why? Why one extra piece of dialogue? Why? <laughs> Hi there, good looking. Oh, who's Rachel? He arrived in one piece. Hey, Rachel. Right on time, I see. Like always. Listen, do me a favor and give Ed a message. Tell him he doesn't need to have you checking up on me every little thing. I got my instructions. I'm on top of it. You're on top of it? Really? How refreshing. That's sarcasm, Rachel. It is, I don't appreciate it. Thanks for the confidence, Rachel. It's nice to be trusted. Well, I wouldn't dream to speak for the boss, but I trust you. Out there all alone, working hard, busting your tail to get things done. At least I think so. You think so? What the hell's that mean? Oh, come on, Kyle. You're not exactly an open book. Oh, God. Every conversation is like this. You know, it... it I guess if this is what you're looking for, like, I don't mean to disparage the game in the sense of, like, if this is what you want, then you're going to have a great time with this. Like, I would say this game is almost more like reading a novel. But I stand by my assessment, my, my opinion, I guess. You know, you, you can disagree with me. Like, maybe I'm totally off base on this. But I stand by my, my assessment that sometimes a lot of this stuff is just filler. And... Like I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of True Detective, honestly, because that's one of my favorite, um, you know, TV shows. The first season, anyway, like blew me away. I, I consider True Detective more of a miniseries because I wasn't crazy about season two, and I haven't given season three a chance yet. Although I heard, I've heard from many people I really should. But season one, it's like there's interesting dialogue, like some of the conversations and the monologues, Cole's monologues, you know, Matthew McConaughey's character in particular are like mesmerizing at how fascinating they are and the dialogue is so clever and witty and it's also to the point you know like there aren't tons of conversations just to fill space and i feel like a lot of the conversations here are just like extended they're just like filled and elaborated and again Maybe it's just me, and for people who like and enjoy this game, it's like, what they really like are these long conversations. So it's kind of like a mix between reading a book and playing a game. But that isn't what I was expecting today, and personally, I don't gravitate towards that. If I want to read a book... Like, frankly, the story I've seen so far, and the dialogue I've read so far, it's nowhere near what I would consider a good book. And so, again, I'm going back to, like, True Detective as my base. The, the, the dialogue... In True Detective was so fascinating I, I was like riveted the whole time so if they had that kind of conversation going on in this game I'd say yeah and you're allowed to have a long lots of dialogue and long conversation when it's super interesting but when it's like little stuff like uh, you know Rosa's got a mouth the size of Nebraska listen to that you know don't call me mister a kid crying about a puzzle a baby puzzle like come on <laughs> get to the chase just I really like the art style of this game. I love the the control, the mix of 2D and top-down controls are really cool. The interface seems good. All I wish, the only wish I have so far in this game, is that these conversations were a tenth of their length so that we could sort of be moving through this at a better pace. And I think if it did that, I wouldn't be uh I wouldn't be just rolling my eyes at this point. I mean again, we've been playing for over 30 minutes now, and I feel like we have yet to do anything of importance. What have we done? We've rung a bell. We filled out a registration card. We've taken a key, taken a pen. We've solved the baby puzzle. 
and we've answered a phone and now the phone's ringing again so we get to answer it a second time and have another conversation <laughs> like come on oh man oh my god like compared to other like detective and puzzle games like um oh, what's that one professor layton i say professor layton games are way better than what we've seen here even though like the art, the style of this is quite different from Professor Layton, I kind of dig the style. Like a Professor Layton game, we would have solved multiple puzzles by now. We would have actually done detectiving. This is just like, you want to read a book full of like a lot of drawn out dialogue? Because if so, here you go. You need to pay your tab up front. Now don't get me wrong. It ain't that I don't trust you or nothing. It's just that you're a first timer guest and I don't know you or nothing. Hold on, you want me to pay you right now? Nah, I ain't like that. You don't have to take care of it right away. You just gotta, you just got here after all. Go ahead and sit a spell. But if you swing by and take care of it before six o'clock, I'd be much obliged. Okay. Well, is that the end of our conversation now? Thank you. Oh my God, it ended within only a few more sentences. Now I gotta go find my cash. I tossed the roll of my suitcase when I got out of the car. And now we go over here. <laughs> Open our suitcase. I'm keeping a list of all the interesting things we've done. And so far, they're very benign and basic. Uh, this is like... Uh, I'm about ready for the boneyard. Hopefully we get to sleep after we pay. And then once we do, we like go into a dream... Uh, you know... Uh, some kind of Lovecraftian dream world nightmare and some actual interesting stuff can happen like show me a demon show me uh, show me someone who has a bullet wound <laughs> have me do anything let me investigate a crime scene let me interrogate somebody god give me something to do please wait did i was i not allowed to open my briefcase uh puzzle piece suitcase key use on the suitcase Oh, we solved the puzzle of the opening of the suitcase. Oh, my. <laughs> Insert the key. Oh, and I have to actually turn it. Okay. I I can't. I don't know how to do this. Um. I broke the key. <laughs> Did I just lose at the game? The old key finally broke. Damn it. This is not what I need right now. All right, well, I guess I can't pay. I'm gonna lock my door and hope they don't kick it in. Maybe I can use some wire to pick the lock. All right, let's go to the closet and find some wire, right? Or where else could you get wire? We do it in here. Can I go into the bathroom? There's a sink. That's your basic sink. Just the one I got at home. Toilet. Go ahead and uh, have a have a bathroom break. Let's steal some towels. Okay. Where does one get wire? We finally have a puzzle and I have no idea where to begin. Like normally we would have a closet. No. Oh, I see a hanger. I guess I have to look from the first person perspective, but look, if you look around here, there's totally a hanger. There we go. The hanger is attached to the rack. Do people really try to steal these? Um, take it anyway, that's a wire hanger. Hmm, thick wire. I bet that'll come in handy. Okay. Uh, is there anything? Use the broken suitcase key. On the hanger. Not gonna get anywhere using this right now. Wait, so I need wire. They tell me to look for wire. The most intuitive place to do it is to just take a coat hanger. And they literally won't let me do it? Seriously? Oh, we can rotate our different angle to look at the hanger. The hanger we're not allowed to take. Okay, I, got, I gotta look around the room from the first person to see if there's anything else. Maybe there's something in a drawer. Let's try this. 
Hey, addresser, I've got just, uh, I've just got an old box in my place. Okay. This hotel brochure next to the phone. Um, oh, a paper clip. Wow, I did not, I was not expecting that to uh, work. Better hang on to this, it might come in handy. Never in my life have I randomly noticed a paperclip on a desk and thought to myself, hmm, better hold on to this, this will be handy, and put it in my pocket. If you do that, you are literally just a hoarder. But I suppose video game characters are sort of like hoarders. Alright. Grab our paperclip. Use. It's such a cliche that you can use a paperclip to pick a lock. I guess you can, but... Um... I... I've never actually seen anyone do it. I gotta, like, be very gentle. There we go. Pretty sure if you want to pick a lock, you're not supposed to bend the paperclip all the way out like that. Like, that's not very useful. How are you actually gonna turn it? There we go, nice and straight. I got a piece of thin wire. Like, you do still want it to be a little bent to pick the lock. Because you have to be able to put pressure... Like, I know a little bit about lockpicking. I've watched some YouTube videos because I find it fascinating. You have to be able to put pressure and turn the lock to a bit... A little bit while you use the uh, wire to sort of pick up the different uh, tumblers or whatever they call them. Okay, damn key broke and the suitcase is still locked. I need something to get this open. Maybe we'll use the base of the key to put the pressure on the lock like I've been saying. Use a thin wire on the suitcase. All right, we put it in. And now. Um, interesting. Did that do it? Looked like he failed. This ain't working. I'm not going to get my suitcase open with this thin wire. I'm gonna need a thicker piece of wire. Oh, seriously? Wait, so I do need the... the what, 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 what. <laughs> I'm looking up a walkthrough. Oh my god, you guys are never gonna believe this. We can't even get into the suitcase with the wire until we actually go back down and talk to, uh... Talk to this guy. All those questions that, uh, that he asked, uh, we were supposed to answer. Um, like all those questions that came up when I was talking to him. Oh my god, we're talking to Rachel again. Oh god, guys, we are not getting any further <laughs> this game. This game is a train wreck. I don't know what to say. It's fascinating that this game has such... High ratings, like it's rated like really high. I actually want to go and read both what people say about this online and uh, and what uh, the book says. Because I actually, I didn't read specifically what the book said about this one before we started playing. But let's go back downstairs for a second. Why don't we end on some conversation? Because it seems to be the uh, bulk of what this game is all about, conversing. Um, the puzzles, really, who cares about puzzles? Puzzles are a waste of time, aren't they? Uh, like, look at all these look at all these questions we have to ask this guy. You have to listen to literally every one of these. A package will be delivered. So from the walkthrough, I just skimming it. It's like the one-eyed woman still comes up and talks to you. You have to cut the wire. You have to open your suitcase. Like it's so slow. We're gonna be we we be out here for like another hour and a half before anything happens. So, um, while this guy blathers on and on, I'm just gonna grab the thousand one book and let's see what it says about this game. Alright, I'm gonna try and keep clicking on the dialogue while I read this, so if you want to read the dialogue and see what's going on, you're welcome to it. Yes, Hotel Dusk, room 215, has a divisive rotoscoped art style, reminiscent of a certain classic AHA video. Oh, I need to be clicking over here. Um, let's see. Uh, features unusual uh, selection of puzzles, all, almost all of which are drab. Ranging from tense delights of searching through very small laundry basket. How's that a effing puzzle? <laughs> to peeling a label from a bottle of wine without tearing it. But uh, Sing's intriguing faux noir follow-up. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Pretty boy hide. Used to be a New York cop. Blah, blah, blah. 
It's not your average video game narrative. It's coy, involuted. Involuted? What does that even mean? And pleasantly ambiguous. And it casts a spell over the game. There's a strange low-key tone to Hotel Dusk Room 215 that makes it a lot easier to forget the weak elements as you explore the hotel. Oh, I'm noticing the weak elements. Um, see, the game says that you're going to be interrogating suspects... Um, and I, when I read that about the game, I thought that'd be cool, but it says, interrogating suspects in endless dialogue exchanges. Oh, the Thousand One book knew what they were talking about. These are endless dialogue exchanges. Solving strange, limp, strangely limp puzzles isn't a perfect game. Then at times, it isn't even that good. Why is this in the book then? <laughs> Wait, look, listen to this. Hold on, let me read this again. There's a strange low-key tone to Hotel Dusk Room 215 that makes it a lot easier to forget the weaker elements as you explore the hotel, interrogating suspects in endless dialogue exchanges, and solving strangely limp puzzles. It isn't a perfect game, then at times it, is, it isn't even that good, but it belongs to that rare breed of entertainment where you can genuinely say there's nothing else like it. So because it is unique, it is allowed to suck? Oh my god, not just in terms of presentation, but in terms of stories it wants to tell, and the characters it wants to explore, and ultimately, the places it wants to take you while it does so. Wow. I don't even have to look up reviews online. It might be a cherished and well-rated game, but as the Thousand One book even says, it isn't even that good of a game. I, I guess I'm not crazy. I don't know, maybe people, maybe everyone watching this is like, whoa, we love this game, how dare you, but... Guys, no, no, this game isn't for me. The thing, the thing that's interesting is I 100% agree that I like the style of the game. The sort of animation is cool. The mechanic of 2D and 3D walking around is cool. It's pretty intuitive for clicking on things and stuff. Um, and in fact, I wouldn't even mind benign puzzles if the killer for this, the absolute killer, is the endless dialogue. Cut to the effing chase <laughs> get get me from a to b so that i can actually play the game that's what i want again if you're here to read if you just want to be immersed in an atmosphere and you just you just want to sit back and have a really passive experience with occasional interaction then this game might be for you but for someone like me who likes to play a game, like if I want to read a book or watch a show, I read a book or watch a show. I don't want those things when I'm playing a game. Hence, endless dialogue is not a selling point for me. And the Thousand One book even says that it's not good at that part. You know, there's weaker elements of it. But I don't know. I don't know what to make of this one. I 100% would not recommend this to anyone unless they were specifically looking for an immersive... In fact, I don't even know how immersive it is. But this sort of... Again, there is an atmosphere here. And there are things I like about this, but at the same time, it's like, no, no, this is just, I don't know. I haven't even been able to get to the wish part of Room 215. We're just not going to get there because this just does not end. I haven't been paying attention to any of this dialogue because I've just given up. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I hope all the fans of this game who clicked on this video hoping that they were going to see somebody absolutely fall in love with this. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna downvote this and eviscerate me in the comments and bring it on, bring it on. You know, I, I don't, you know, I, I don't know what else to say at this point. But uh, if you do love this game, you know, if you do love this game, feel free to share with us in the comments why you love it. But for me, I think I'm done. Anyway, guys, uh, that's it for today. Kind of anticlimactic, but what can you do? They're not all winners in the Thousand and One book, and uh, we'll, we will be back soon with yet another game from the book, and hopefully one that uh, that sort of clicks with us a little bit better. You know, everyone's going to click differently on different games. This one just didn't happen to click for us. So anyway, um, yeah, what do you guys think of this game? Sound off in the comments down below, and as always, hopefully you enjoyed my suffering. And so if you did, go ahead and like the video. Uh, other than that, I will catch you in the next one. Uh, until next time, my friends, you take care of yourselves. And peace. Game developers, please, for the love of God, trim your conversations.